Praise the Lord wherever you are in your living room or wherever you're worshiping God. Today we want to declare the goodness and the favor of the Lord over this place and we just want to declare that God is good and God fights for us. Exodus 14 verse 14 says, "The Lord will fight for you and you have only to be silent." 2 Corinthians 20 Verse 17 says, you will not need to fight this battle. Stand firm and hold your position and see the salvation of the Lord on your behalf. O Judah and Jerusalem, do not be afraid and do not be dismayed. Tomorrow, go out against them and the Lord will be with you. Uh, Deuteronomy 20 verse 4 says, for the Lord your God is he who goes with you to fight for you against your enemies to give you the victory. Uh, Deuteronomy 3 22 says you shall not fear them for it is the Lord your God who fights for you so today we just want to declare that we are not afraid today we want to declare that whatever battle that you are going through you are fighting from a point of victory so let's put our hands together in that living room let your neighbor downstairs and the neighbor upstairs know that there is someone who's praising their God foot in your living room let your neighbors know the God that you worship yeah oh. God is fighting for us Pushing back the darkness, lighting up the kingdom that cannot be shaken. In the name of Jesus, enemies defeated. And we will shout it out, shout it out. Let's sing God. God is fighting for us, pushing back the darkness, lighting up, lighting up the kingdom that cannot be, that shaken. Cannot be shaken. In the name, In the name of Jesus, oh, enemies defeated. Shout it out, shout it Sing out. God is fighting God for is us. Fighting for us. Pushing, pushing back the darkness, lighting up the kingdom that cannot be shaken. In the name, in the name of Jesus, yeah. enemies defeated. And we will shout it out, shout it oh, out. Oh, let your neighbors hear. God is fighting for us. Pushing back the darkness, lighting up the kingdom that cannot be shaken. In the name, In the name of, Jesus. of Jesus, enemies defeated, and we will shout it out, shout it oh, out. Oh, be a confession, God is fighting for us, pushing up the dark. He's lighting, lighting up, up the key that cannot be shaken. Cannot be shaken. In the name, In the name of, of Jesus. Jesus, enemies defeated, and we will shout it out. Pushing back the darkness, lighting 
cannot be shaken in the name of Jesus. And it is in peace. And we will shine it out. We shout it out. One more time, God is fighting for us. Pushing back the darkness. Lighting up the kingdom. That cannot be shaken in the name of Jesus. Declare it in Jesus' name um, that we will leave uh, and want to declare something in Jesus' name uh, that it's coming down, it's coming down the walls of Jericho, it's coming down. Oh, sing with me, it's coming down, it's coming down, it's coming down the wall of the Jericho. Down. Tell your neighbor it's coming, it's coming down. down. It's coming down. It's coming down. It's coming down. It's coming down. The walls of Jericho. It's coming down. Oh, let's declare it's coming down. It's coming down. It's coming down. Oh, the walls of Jericho. It's coming down. Let it be a confession. It's, it's coming. coming down. It's 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 coming down. Sing oh. It's coming down. It's coming down. It's coming down. Sing oh. It's coming down. Oh. It's coming down. It's coming down. Sing oh. Coming down. down, it's coming down, it's coming down. Oh, the walls of Jericho, walls of Jericho. It's, coming, it's down. coming down. I see no sickness, it's coming down. I see healing, it's coming down. In Jesus' name, walls of Jericho. It's coming down, it's coming down. The walls of Jericho, it's coming down. I see no sickness, it's coming down. I see healing, it's coming down. In Jesus' name, it's coming down. 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 Walls of Jericho. It's coming. Sing oh, 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 it's coming down. Oh, 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 I see victory. It's coming down. It's coming down. It's coming down. Make it a confession in your life it's that it's coming down. It's coming down. Yeah. And we will never settle for less. We know there is more that's found in you. Come on, church, sing with me. And we will never settle for less. We know there is more that's found in you. And we will never, ever. And we will never settle for less. Cause we 
know, we know there's more that's found in you. It's in you. It's in you, Lord. It's in you, Lord. We know. We know there's more that's found in you. We know, we know there's more that's found in you, and we'll never lose, and we will never settle for less. For we know, we know, yes, we know, there's more that's found in you. There's more in you, oh Lord. There's more in you, oh Lord. Dear Lord, we come before you today. We want to go deep into you, oh Jehovah. Because we know there is more. There is more in you. Father, for your word said you will do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we can think and imagine. That means, Lord, there is more. There is more in you. Fungi mla go haufukuzwi we nimba go ake haufukuzwi. You know that one day may be today. Around and you're not the thing you know. You know that one day, maybe today, you look around and you're not the same. Need a people who are Need a people who are How can it be? He make a time. Where do you go when you know who gonna be show? How can it be? Uje kwa ke Yesu anaweza ni wama ajabu. You know that one day maybe today you look around and. You're not the same. Need a people who are Need a people who are Tabibu Tabibu Tabibu.
For there's no one else but you. There's no one else but you. Uje kwa ke Yesu anaweza ni wa maajabu. You know that one day, maybe today, you look around and you're not the same. Nita bibu wa karibu. Nita bibu wa karibu. Tabibu wa karibu. Tabibu. Tabibu. Tabibu, Tabibu, King of Glory, You are our healer, and there's no other name Hallelujah. that we worship and we praise. Hallelujah. But Your name, O oh Lord, Your name, O oh King of Glory, is the only name we bow down to. Yes, Hallelujah! Lord. We worship You. We magnify Your name, O oh God. There is none that is Thank like you, you. There is none besides you. Oh, we worship you in K3C today. We bless you. You are the medicine that we require. You are the healer that is near to us. You are the sustainer. You are the provider. Oh, you are the one. Your name. Oh, God, besides you, there is no other. And we worship and we glorify you. We magnify you, oh Jesus. Oh, oh we lift up our voices and declare yes, and that there is you, no Lord. God like our God. There is and no glory like you. our King. Oh, won't you just bless the Lord I now? Oh, won't you worship him and magnify his name? Won't you declare that he is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end? Oh. Anaweza ni wa maajabu Uje kwa ke Yesu Anaweza ni wa maajabu You know that one day, maybe today You look around and you're not the same Father, you indeed, we draw nigh to you. We draw nigh to you. Today we are sharing the Lord's table. And uh, as we have already been told earlier at the beginning of the service, uh, you who are at home, I know that uh, it's another day that we can share as family together. That the priest in the home can serve us uh, with the elements. So I want to give you a little time as you just organize yourself. Uh, get the elements ready because we want to celebrate what God has done. God has ordained that we do this always whenever we do this in remembrance of him. Uh, if you are there at home, uh, take this opportunity to lead your family. Take this opportunity uh, to share the elements with your family. And I know that God is going to be blessed today in the houses of many people around the world. As people come to worship name, even as we take Jesus, part you're the in this that is the Lord's one. table we there's going to be a measure name. of grace that is going to be unveiled there's going to be a grace that is going to be unveiled right we there in your house your name Jesus you're the beautiful one we love your, your name just sing how we love your name we love your name, Jesus, you are the beautiful one. We love your name. Oh, sing, Jesus, we love your name. How we love your name, Jesus, you're the beautiful one. We love your name. Sing how we love. Now we love your name, Jesus, you're the beautiful one. We love your name. No other God 
can be called the fire. No other God can be called the friend. No other God can be called redeemer. No other God coming back. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. How we love your name, oh God. How we esteem your name mm -hmm. because there is no other name unto man. No other name given unto man. No other name before which every knee shall bow. No other name, oh, before every tongue will confess that name of Jesus. That name that is greater, that is higher, that is more powerful than any other. And therefore we love your name, oh God. We run into your name today. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Listen, Paul wrote to the Corinthians in 1 Corinthians chapter number 11. And this is what he said in verse 23. He says, For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you. There is something that Paul received from the Lord. And this is the same thing that he delivers unto the Corinthians. There is something that he has received from the Lord. And I want to tell you that today, even as we come to the Lord's table, it is to receive. It is to receive. I repeat again, it is to receive from the Lord. This that Paul said that he had received is what he is delivering unto the children again of Israel. He says that the Lord Jesus Christ, on the same night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it. And he said, take it, this is my body which is broken for you this do in remembrance of me and after the same manner he took also the cup when he had supped saying this cup is the new testament in my blood this do ye as often as you drink in remembrance of me for as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup you show the lord's death Till he comes. And listen, the Lord is saying that there is something that is received as we partake, as we commemorate, as we remember what the Lord Jesus did. There is something that is received. The things of God sometimes are beyond our imagination. His ways are higher than ours. His, 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 his thoughts are much, much wiser than ours. The things that he gives to us to do, we do by faith. And he says, Paul says that he received something. And this same thing is what he is passing on to us. That we may also receive of the Lord as we remember him. Today is a day of receiving. Today is a day of receiving of the Lord. Listen, the things of God sometimes will not, may not make logical sense. But they make sense in the spirit. Today as we partake, as we partake of the bread, as we partake of the drink, there is a dimension of the Lord's grace that is coming upon us. Won't we receive it in the mighty name of Jesus? Won't we receive it in Jesus' name? Verse number 29 says that he who eats and drinks unworthily eats damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you and many sleep. There's a reason sometimes we receive some things. We receive good things from the Lord. But even as we have received it, we have to take cognizance of how powerful this God is as we connect to Him in our receiving. That we may just take some time and just ask that the Lord may cleanse us. That the Lord may just wash us. Father, that right now, even as we stand before the Lord's table, that King of glory, that you may just cleanse us of those things that we have done. Wash us. Oh God, we repent and we turn away from sin, that besetting sin, that thing that has 
try to hold us down, Lord, we turn it around and we say, no more. We cut ties with it in Jesus' name. We set ourselves free because you have set us free, O oh God. Thank you, King of glory. Even now, as we receive and we partake, we give you glory because you are translating us into a new place. You're giving us and we're receiving of your power and of your love. Now, each one of you who is there prepared with a, with a bread, shall we take the bread and shall we eat it together? Let's receive the bread together. In the same vein, let us take the cup and let us partake together. Father, we give you thanks and praise as we have stood in faith all around the heartland of Kedilesho, even beyond overseas as people join us together in this communion service. Father, let your power just begin to flow through us. What Paul received, cause us to receive as well. Yes, you're not a respecter of man. Those same things that we have seen in the scripture that you have given unto others, you are able to give unto us. And therefore we are receiving now of the grace of God. We are receiving now of the healing virtue of God. We are receiving now of the uplifting. We are receiving now of the grace for speed. We are receiving now Lord, divine acceleration. We are receiving now, Abba Father, ideas. Oh, yes, we are receiving ideas for business and uh, ideas that will move us forward. We are receiving wisdom from above. We are receiving strength, Abba Father, where we have been weak. We are receiving strength in our mental capacity where we have been discouraged. We are receiving it now in Jesus' name. Father, I thank you because you are doing all of these things. And Lord, we shall hear the testimonies of what you do because you are great and greatly to be praised. We give you thanks and we give you praise. In the various houses that we are doing this right now, let revival spark, let the fire of God spark up in Jesus' name. With the children, as they receive even of the table today, oh, let them be filled with the Spirit of God. King of glory, let our houses experience a revival fire in the mighty name of Jesus. Yes, Lord, you are coming again now. Oh, to revive us anew and afresh. Let that revival start in our houses. Let it start in our small rooms. Let, let it start in, in the secret place of, 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 of our houses, oh God. And let it be seen evident that Jesus Christ is in us and with us. Father, I give you glory and I give you praise. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. No other God. Shall we sing that song? We love your name, Jesus, you're the beautiful one. We love your name. Sing how we love your name. How we love your name, Jesus, you're the beautiful one. We love your name. Yes, we love your name, oh, No other God, no other God can be called a father. No other God, no other God can be called a friend. No other God, no other God can be called redeemer. No other God is no other God back yet.
faithful one. We love your name. Hallelujah. We love the name of Jesus. In this church as K3C, we love the name of Jesus. We are proud to declare that Jesus is our Lord. We celebrate him every Sunday. We celebrate him not even just every Sunday, but every day of our lives. Because he is worthy to be glorified and worthy to be praised. So we want to welcome you to Kilaleshua Covenant Community Church again. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, thank you for being with us. Uh, now we come to the time when we, we will hear the word. But uh, before we hear the word, we just want to give a mighty uh, thank you uh, to the worship team as they have led us today. Have, they, have, you, have you not enjoyed the presence of God as we worshiped, as we lifted up the, the name of Jesus? If you have done so, yes, uh, just send us a thumbs up. Uh, send us something that indeed, surely, uh, you have touched the hand of God even today. And uh, worship team, thank you so much. The Lord bless you. The Lord bless you so much. Uh, we are being led today by none other than uh, an elder. It is rare to find these elders who can sing. And uh, there's an elder among us here who is uh, the, the youngest of the elders. It's interesting that uh, he's even called an elder. I, 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 I have my doubts, but anyhow, uh, he's here and he has led us well. And we bless the name of Jesus. Uh, uh, we, we want him to be leading us uh, uh, the whole month. Uh, uh, we are writing in application letters uh, so that he may do that. Uh, I know he told me later that uh, I will have um, uh, to, to, to an appraisal to answer, but uh, it's no problem. The world now knows uh, that there is, a, there is a threat to the pastor here. But bless the name of Jesus. We thank the Lord. We thank the Lord. Today is uh, another day and we are hearing... Uh, the voice of the Lord again uh, through the gospel and uh, the, 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 the letter that was written by Nehemiah. Basically the book of Nehemiah. Uh, and none other is coming uh, to break it down for us uh, than Pastor Peter Mwangi, the associate pastor here. Uh, a man I love. A man who is uh, technically gifted. If you've ever known of somebody who's technically gifted. Uh, this is uh, Pastor Peter Mwangi. He's a man who is uh, nocturnal in his approach. Uh, he's, he does his best work at night. Uh, I, I don't know if that really helps us very much, but I know that he has been preparing uh, day and night uh, for this day, and uh, therefore we are eager and anticipating what God is going to bring to us through this man of God. He is looking the part... Uh, <laughs> Uh, looking sharp like a knife, and we bless the Lord for his life. Karibu sana, uh, man of God. Thank you, Pastor David. I know today it's your opportunity to revenge, um, but I know the last time we did these things happened after that week. So we bless the Lord for his goodness and even for his love upon us, that today we are here to celebrate God's faithfulness but more than that, to be in his house, even as you are in your house. And I pray and trust that the Lord will minister to us in a special way, even as we gather uh, in his presence. Allow me to pray even as we get into the word of God. Let us pray together. Father, we thank you for this opportunity to come and even get to listen to your word. Lord, I want to pray that even as we sit, even as we watch this, whether at this very same time or even after, I want to pray that even as we declare your word today, the Lord, you're going to use me, Lord, just as your vessel, Abba, Father. I pray that, Jehovah God, you may give me the words to speak, the flow of the Spirit, the move of your word, Lord, even to be evident in our lives today even as we gather for this. So Lord, even as we start off even this book of Nehemiah, Lord, I pray that God may you speak upon us today, for we pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Indeed, it's a wonderful time that we gather to listen to the word of God. And as has been mentioned, we shall be going through the book of Nehemiah uh, for these two months, we must say that there is quite a lot in there, but we pray and trust that we shall be able to deliver the word of God, even as he desires of us to deliver it. And even for you, as we go on this series that we've titled, Arise and Build, that you shall arise and take part 
even in the building of your personal life, but even more than that, to what God is calling on you to get to engage in in this season. As we come into Nehemiah, I like to mention this, that it's a book all about history, I must say. When you read from Joshua to the end to Esther, these are books which talk about the history of Israel. And maybe I may ask, even as we start, how many of you loved history? You know, just check with the person who's sitting next to you, you know, because we had our pet subjects. There are those subjects which were good for us. I know in this church, there are lovers of history, especially some lawyers whom I know, because they have said it here before. I don't want to mention names. So there are some of us who love history, but I pray that even as we go into this, that we shall be able to engage and to be part of what God is speaking uh, to us. In looking lately, when you go to those who are in high school, the subject changed and they now study history and government. And so today we are going to be looking at the history of the children of Israel from the book of Nehemiah. Last week, Pastor David asked us, you know, each and every one of us, you know, why am I here? Is my life making a difference? Is my life making a difference in the people around me? You know, what is my purpose? What is that one thing that you will do to make a difference? And so our prayer is that out of this series that you shall also be able to develop your mission, be able to walk in your purpose, be able to arise and build and engage in the things that God is calling on us to do. One man said that the joy of this is that in studying history, we are studying his story. We are studying his story. And that is the story of Jesus Christ. That is the work of God that we are getting to study. And so, please engage with me as we go through this journey to understand what Nehemiah was getting himself into. And like I said, it is one of the last books that talks about the history of the children of Israel when you categorize or you kind of cluster the different sets or categories that we find in the scriptures. But I want to say this even from the onset, that we shall rotate between the book of Ezra and Nehemiah. You know, because in the principles of scripture, it says that scripture interprets scripture. So we shall rotate between Ezra and Nehemiah just to be able to find an understanding of what this book of Nehemiah is all about. But one thing that we also need to understand is that by the time when Nehemiah was seeking to go back to Jerusalem, there are two others who had led the exiles back and who had gone back to work on the rebuilding of Jerusalem. We find a man by the name of Zerubbabel, who led the first return to Jerusalem in 538 BC. And so Zerubbabel was an influential political and religious leader in Israel. During the time when Jewish exiles returned from captivity to, in Babylon. So he's best known for spearheading the rebuilding of God's temple in Jerusalem. So we need to understand that, that the first return or the first group was led by a man named Zerubbabel, whose work going back was for the rebuilding of God's temple. But then later on, he was followed by Ezra. You know, Ezra was the second of the three key leaders to leave Babylon for the reconstruction of Jerusalem. So Zerubbabel reconstructed the temple, but Nehemiah built the walls, but Ezra restored the worship. So we need to understand those three people so that you understand that by the time we are coming to Nehemiah, Zerubbabel had gone in first, Ezra had followed, and, so now, and now Nehemiah has to go back and rebuild the walls and gates. Still, for us just to build a foundation on this. Ezra in himself was a scribe and priest sent with religious and political powers by the Persian king at Saxus to lead the group of Jewish 
exiles from Babylon to Jerusalem. So that is the foundation I would want of us to have, to understand that others had gone before Nehemiah to do different roles, because that will be important of us even as we move forward. I must say, even as we start this book of Nehemiah, that the names we find in this book and even in other books of the Bible are not very common names. I actually wanted to ask you to check on your phone book if you have saved someone by the name of Nehemiah, <laughs> Ezra, <laughs> or Parosh, or Hanani. I don't know if you have such names on your phone book because these names were names of that time, but also I love that some of these names were of great significance. And so in Nehemiah chapter 1, we read this, and it says, I'm reading from the New, Lo New, New, Loving, boy. New Living Translation. <laughs> New Living Translation. I think there should be a New Loving Translation. Praise the Lord. So in Nehemiah chapter 1, verse 1, it says that these are the memos of Nehemiah, son of Hakaliah. In the late autumn, in the month of Kislev, in the 20th year of King Atsaxa's reign, I was at the fortress of Susa. Hanani, one of my brothers, came to visit me with some other men who had just arrived from Judah. I asked them about the Jews who had returned there from captivity and about how things were going on in Jerusalem. They said to me, things are not going well for those who returned to the province of Judah. They are in great trouble and disgrace. The wall of Jerusalem has been torn down and the gates have been destroyed by fire. When I heard this, I sat down and wept. In fact, for days I mourned, fasted and prayed to the God of heaven. Then I said, O oh Lord, God of heaven, the great and awesome God who keeps his covenant of unfailing love with those who love him and obey his commands. Listen to my prayer. Look down and see my praying night and day for your people Israel. I confess that we have sinned against you. Yes, even my own family and I have sinned. We have sinned terribly by not obeying the commands, decrees, and regulations that you gave us through your servant Moses. Please remember what you told your servant Moses. If you are unfaithful to me, I will scatter you among the nations. But if you return to me and obey my commands and live by them, then even if you are exiled to the ends of the earth, I will bring you back to the place I have chosen for my name to be honored. The people you rescued by your great power and strong hand strong hand are your servants oh lord please hear my prayer listen to the prayers of those of us who delight in honoring you please grant me success today by making the king favorable to me put it into his heart to be kind to me in those days i was the king's cup bearer allow me to read chapter 2 verse 1 to 10 it says that early the following spring, in the month of Nisan, during the 20th year of King Axaxa's reign, I was serving the king his wine. I had never appeared sad in his presence. So the king asked me, why are you looking so sad? You don't look sick to me. You must be deeply troubled. Then I was terrified. But I replied, long live the king. How can I, be, how, how can I not be sad? For the city where my ancestors are buried is in ruins, and the gates have been destroyed by fire. The king asked, well, how can I help you? With a prayer to the God of heaven, I replied, if it please the king, and if you are pleased with me, your servant, send me to Judah to rebuild the city where my ancestors are buried. The king, with the queen sitting beside him, asked, how long will you be gone? When will you return? After I told him how long I will be gone, the king agreed to my request. 
I also say to the king, if it please the king, let me have letters addressed to the governors of the province west of the Euphrates River, instructing them to let me travel safely through their territories on my way to Judah. To Judah. And please give me a letter addressed to Asaph, the manager of the king's forest, instructing him to give me timber. I will need it to make beams for the gates of the temple fortress, for the city walls, and for a house for myself. And the king granted this request because the gracious hand of God was on me. When I came to the governors of the province west of the Euphrates River, I delivered the king's letter to them. The king, I should add, had sent along army officers and horsemen to protect me. But when Sanballat the Horonite and Tobiah the Ammonite official heard of my arrival, they were very displeased that someone had come to help the people of Israel. And so we've read chapter 1, which has around um, 11 verses, and we have read in chapter 2 up to verse uh, number 10. And so it's important of us to have that context even as we come into a time of scripture. Because when you start and we see in verse number 1 of chapter 1, we are told about this month, uh, the month of Kislev, uh, which was according to the Hebrew, Bible, sorry, the Hebrew calendar. And if it were today, is what would be termed between the month of November and December. So that is how, and that was the timing that we find uh, Nehemiah writing this and saying, you know, Hanani has come to him during the month of November, December, around that time, if you are talking about our current calendar uh, that we get to use. And like I say, that the book of Nehemiah could be read as a sequel, or a sequel, a published broadcast or recorded work that continues the story, you know, or develops the theme that had earlier been developed as we see from the book of Ezra. And so that is why I said from the beginning that we shall be going through Ezra and Nehemiah because they two connect together so that we can have an understanding of what uh, was there. But like I said from the beginning, that Zerubbabel had led the first uh, group of exiles to return to Jerusalem. And this we find in Ezra uh, chapter 2. Because in Ezra chapter 2 we find this. It says in verse number 1 in Ezra chapter 2 that here is the list of the Jewish exiles of the provinces who returned from their captivity. King Nebuchadnezzar had deported them to Babylon. But now they returned to Jerusalem and the other towns in Judah where they originally lived. Their leaders were Zerubbabel, Jeshua, Nehemiah, Seraiah, you know, and others who are mentioned there. So it is good for us to have that understanding. And in the same Ezra chapter 2, we are told around verse number 68, that when they arrived at the temple of the Lord in Jerusalem, some of the family leaders made voluntary offerings toward the rebuilding of God's temple. Like I said, Zerubbabel was involved in the rebuilding of the Lord's temple. And so in this verse number 68, we find that a total list of numbers is given, an account is given of the people who returned, but also more than that, the things that they gave towards the rebuilding of the temple. The return of Ezra is mentioned in Ezra chapter 7. Verse 1 to 7, it says this, that many years later in Ezra chapter 7, that many years later, during the reign of King Artaxerxes of Persia, there was a man named Ezra. And when you move to verse number 6 of Ezra chapter 7, it says, This Ezra was a scribe who was well versed in the law of Moses, which the Lord, the God of Israel, had given to the people of Israel. So he came up to Jerusalem from Babylon, and the king gave him everything he asked for because the gracious hand of the Lord his God was on him. Verse number 7 says that some of the people of Israel, as well as some of the priests, Levites, singers, gatekeepers, and temple servants, traveled up to Jerusalem with him in the seventh year of King Artaxerxes reign. So just to understand the period and the people that Ezra went back with. And when you come to Ezra chapter 8, verse 1 and 2, we are told that here is a list of the family leaders and the genealogies of those who came with Ezra from Babylon, 
during the reign of King Axasas. And we find that he says that you know, from the family of Phineas, there was Gershom. From the family of Ithamar, there was Daniel. And it continues to flow until the end. But there's something that we see even with Ezra compared to Nehemiah. We are told that for Ezra, he was given whatever he needed for the rebuilding. Because we are told in Ezra chapter 8 verse 22, Ezra was ashamed to ask the king for soldiers and horsemen if you compare him with Nehemiah. So in Ezra chapter 8 verse 22, we are told that for I was ashamed to ask the king of, for soldiers and horsemen to accompany us and protect us from the enemies along the way. After all, we are told the king, our God's hand of protection is on all who worship him. But his fierce anger rages against those who abandon him. So a different comparison between Ezra and Nehemiah. Nehemiah went even with soldiers and even with horsemen compared to Ezra. But going back to Nehemiah chapter 1. One of the things we find even as we talk about arising and building is that the first thing that we find here is Nehemiah's concern for Jerusalem. Nehemiah's concern for Jerusalem. And the question I'd like to pose to us today is this. What are some of the things that move you? What are some of the things that are of concern to you when you see them happening in your society? Are there any broken walls, destroyed gates, destroyed value systems, morals, behavior, cultures, even for you at a personal level? Do you have a concern that there are things in your life that you feel that are broken, that need to be rebuilt? Because in Nehemiah chapter 1, from verse 1 to 4, we find that we see Nehemiah's concern for Jerusalem. What are those things that move you? When you look around, even in your family, what things concern or are, 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 are of great concern to you when you think about them? What things do you see and feel really something needs to be done about this? But even beyond that, even when you look at the house of God, what are those things that sometimes when you look at them, possibly you say, we can do better. I can be part of this. I can serve in this area. I can give in this area. Because arising and building will always also come from a place of concern, from a place of need, from a place of understanding that we need to be part of what God wants us to be part of in rebuilding his house, in rebuilding our families, in rebuilding our community, and rebuilding our nation at large. Because in Nehemiah chapter 1, we are told in verse number 3, that they said to me, things are not going well for those who returned to the province of Judah. They are in great trouble and disgrace. The wall of Jerusalem has been torn down and the gates have been destroyed by fire. And when I heard this, I sat down and wept. In fact, for days I mourned, fasted, and prayed to the God of heaven. Nehemiah was moved. When you look around in our community, are there things that move you? And you do not wait for the church to call you to a place of prayer, to a place of fasting. Are you like Nehemiah, that with the concerns that are around you, that your response is to take a posture of prayer, to take a posture of seeking the Lord, to take a posture of brokenness, to take a posture where you're able to engage and even fast and call on the name of the Lord. Are you like Nehemiah today? Or are you there when we see the concerns we can only send on our WhatsApp groups? We can only tell others of what is happening and yet fail to take our part as being the light and the salt of the world. Nehemiah had this and it concerned him and he responded in prayer. 
he responded in prayer. But beyond understanding Nehemiah's concern, I like to add that the second thing that we find in reading Nehemiah chapter 1 was that Nehemiah was at a crisis. Nehemiah had a crisis at hand. Crisis that he knew he needed to respond to. Crisis that he knew he needed to reflect on it and know how to approach it. Actually, when you read in chapter 2, we are told that he now goes to the king, and this is three, four months down the line, and he shares with the king his concern. But I want to say this, that more to this, Nehemiah's crisis was pegged on what had happened earlier in light of their history. That a great predicament or crisis was due to an edict that had been kept them, which had kept them before from rebuilding the temple. So beyond his limitation, Nehemiah was facing a crisis because of what had happened before. And this we can only see it in, a, in the book of Ezra. Because in Ezra chapter 4, we are told this in verse number 6 and 7. Ezra chapter 4, verse 6 and 7. That letters had been sent to the kings before. So several letters had actually been sent to the kings or the different kings who were leading then. So in Ezra chapter 4, verse 6, we are told this. That years later, when Saxas began his reign, the enemies of Judah wrote a letter of accusation against the people of Judah and Jerusalem. Verse number 7 of Ezra chapter 4 says, Even later, during the reign of King Axasas of Persia, the enemies of Judah led by Bishlam, Mithredath, <laughs> and Tabel, sent a letter to Axasas in the Aramaic language, and it was translated to the king. And the letter was basically addressing and these people were basically enemies and who were opposing the work. And so they wrote the letters to the king. And they told him, you know, because in verse number 8, we even told that Rehum the governor, another letter, you know, wrote the letter to the king Axasas about the situation in Jerusalem. And the letter was actually a letter that was, in a way, threatening even the leader. In this letter, there was a moment of Puanisi Kenya. Because when you read in Ezra chapter 4, we are told this in verse number 8 so that you can understand what I'm saying. Rehum the governor and Shimshai the court secretary wrote the letter telling King Axasas about the situation in Jerusalem. They greeted the king for all their colleagues, the judges and the local leaders, you know, and all the people who were mentioned there. They sent all their greetings. And so in verse number 10, they also sent greetings from the rest of the people in this letter, from the great and noble, you know, Ashubanapal, hey, hey. you know, who are deported and relocated in Samaria and throughout the neighboring lands of the province west of the Euphrates River. And they said, you know, this is our letter to you, king. And so in verse number 11, we find this letter that they write. And in that letter, there is a threat to the king. And they tell him, to the king at success, from your royal subjects in the province west of the Euphrates River. And that is why when you see Nehemiah in chapter 2, when he's telling the king, write for me a letter to this leader who is at the province west of the Euphrates River, Nehemiah is dealing with this crisis. He's dealing with this issue because there was some opposition when the people were rebuilding the temple. I hope you're still with me. And so this is what they told the king. The king should know that the Jews who came here to Jerusalem, I mean Ezra chapter 4, from Babylon are rebuilding this rebellious and evil city. They have already laid the foundation and will soon finish its walls. And the king should know that if this city is rebuilt and its walls are compelled, sorry, completed, it will be much to your disadvantage for the Jews will then refuse to pay their tribute customs and tolls to you. Since we are your loyal subjects and do not want to see the king dishonored in this way, we have sent the king this information. We suggest that a search be made in your ancestors' records where you will discover what a rebellious city this has been in the past. In fact, 
it was destroyed because it, of its long and troublesome history of revolt against the kings and countries who controlled it. So in verse number 16, they tell the king this. We declare to the king that if this city is rebuilt and its walls are completed, the province west of the Euphrates River will be lost to you. That cessation will happen. Pwani see Kenya. This is not a new thing. Like we always say, there is nothing new under you know, this very world that we live in. And so they threaten him and tell him, you know, king, if you allow these people to rebuild Jerusalem, we shall move away. We who are in the province west of the Euphrates River, we shall move away from you. And so the king read their letter. And when you continue in Ezra chapter 4, I may not have time to go into it. He actually gives an edict and says that they should not rebuild, which you can read from verse number 18 to verse number 22. He says that no one should dare build. No one should dare work on that rebuilding of Jerusalem. And so this was the crisis that Nehemiah was struggling with. This was the crisis that Nehemiah was facing. That he was wondering, shall I experience the same opposition as it was in the time of Ezra? What shall I do? And yet, the call, the concern to him was to go back and rebuild the walls, to rebuild the gates. The crisis that Nehemiah had. But I'd like to tell you that no crisis is permanent. No crisis is permanent. Because tables turn when you read in Ezra chapter 5 that there is a king who comes into authority and this king is called King Darius. And when King Darius come to, comes into authority, there is a governor by the name of Titania who writes to him again opposing the rebuilding of the temple. But the tables turn because what happens even as Titania tells King Darius, you know, check and see that there was an edict that was given that these people should not rebuild. The tables turn because King Darius himself changes and says, by the way, even now what you should do, Titania, is to support this work of rebuilding the temple. You should even actually give them resources. And no one should oppose the work. <laughs> you know, no one should oppose. And this we find in Ezra chapter 5 from verse number 6, which we find 10 years later to King Darius. And we find that Darius answers him and says in Ezra chapter 6, and orders and gives a memo and says in Ezra chapter 6 verse 3, that let the temple be rebuilt on the site where the Jews used to offer their sacrifices. So tables have turned. God has fought for his people. And he actually says in verse number 6, a new Titania governor of the province west of the Euphrates and your colleagues and your officials do not disturb the construction of the temple of God. Let it be rebuilt in the original site. And do not hinder the governor of Judah and the elders of the Jews in their work. And moreover, he even says, you are to help these elders of the Jews as they rebuild the temple of God. You must pay the full construction costs without delay. From my taxes collected in the province west of the Euphrates. So tables turn, turn beyond the crisis that they had faced earlier in the time of Ezra. But yet, Nehemiah had this crisis at hand. And that is why in Nehemiah chapter 2, he tells the king, write for me a letter to the governor of this province that I may not face opposition. Because I believe this crisis also is one of the things that moved him even as he went into a time of prayer, into a time of seeking the Lord. We have talked about Nehemiah's concern, the crisis that Nehemiah faced, but then more than that, we find that in Nehemiah chapter 1, verse 5 to 11, we find Nehemiah's prayer. Nehemiah's prayer. And I'd like to ask you today, even as you talk about prayer, what constitutes your prayer? How are your prayers? Are they only prayers of supplication? Or what elements constitute your prayer? A very simple one that we normally use 
and there are many other elements of prayer that we can see, is the element of prayer that is based on the acronym ACTS, A-C-T-S. And when we look at the prayer of Nehemiah from verse number 5 to 11, these elements are present. That A means adoration. That adoration is giving God praise and honor for who he is because he is Lord over all. And adoration was part of Nehemiah's prayer. Because in verse number 5 he says that, O oh Lord God of heaven, the great and awesome God who keeps his covenant of unfailing love with those who love him and obey his commands. That Nehemiah adored God in his prayer. I am asking in your prayer, what constitutes your prayer? Is it only asking, asking, and asking? Or do you take time to adore the Lord? When you come to the letter C, is confession. That we find that Nehemiah confessed, and in verse number 6 to 7, he says that, I confess that we have sinned against you. Yes, even my own family and I have sinned. We have sinned terribly by not obeying the commands, decrees, and regulations. Confession. Does your prayer have a time where you repent and confess of your sins? But the letter T in this acts and looking at this acronym is thanksgiving. Are you able to verbalize what you're grateful for in your life? And in the things that God has done for you, or even in the things that you're trusting him to do. Because Nehemiah also came with thanksgiving, declaring what God had promised. Where he said that if you are unfaithful to me, I will scatter you among the nations. But if you return to me, that this is what Nehemiah was grateful for. And obey my commands and live by them. Then even if you're exiled to the ends of the earth, I will bring you back to the place I have chosen for my name to be honored. That this is something that Nehemiah was grateful for. But in Acts, the S means supplication. The action of asking for something honestly or humbly. Praying for the needs of others and even yourself. And that is what we find in verse number 11 of chapter 1. That, O oh Lord, please hear my prayer. Listen to the prayers of those of us who delight in honoring you. Please grant me success today by making the king favorable to me. Put it into his heart to be kind to me. That Nehemiah was able to bring his supplications to the Lord. The Bible says that do not be anxious over anything, but in prayer and supplication that we may present our requests to God. And Nehemiah understood these elements of prayer. Adoration, confession, thanksgiving, supplication. And this is what constituted even this prayer as we see from verse number 5 to 11. But as we almost come to an end, we find this. We've talked about Nehemiah's concern, Nehemiah's crisis, the prayer that he made. But lastly, allow me to say and talk about Nehemiah's commitment. Nehemiah's commitment. As we asked from the beginning, what moves you? Are you committed to the thing that God has called you to? What is God even calling you today to arise and be part of, to commit yourself to? Because some of the things we find in Nehemiah's commitment is this, that Nehemiah was, a, was willing to relinquish his position and go and build the walls and the gates of Jerusalem. Are you willing to move away from your position? Are you willing to go beyond the place where you are even today and make a difference? And make a difference. The position that Nehemiah had was a prominent position, but yet because he wanted to commit himself to the work of the Lord, he was willing to let it go. This week, and I know maybe some of these people may be watching, someone posted on Facebook and said that if someone was able to pay your bills for your lifetime, <laughs> what would you go out and do different? And I remember some said I would go and serve in ministry. 
Some said I will go and be part of dealing with orphans. Some said I will go and do this thing only because someone would pay their bills for their lifetime. But yet one of the things I see about Nehemiah, he was willing to leave all that and come and build the walls of Jericho and build the gates of, sorry, of Jerusalem and build the gates of Jerusalem. Nehemiah's commitment was beyond the position he had. Pastor David told us last week that Nehemiah was just like a civil servant. Are you willing to commit to serve the Lord, to go beyond what you are today in your position to serve the Lord, to say that I will arise and build? You know, there are times in this church when people who used to go and leave and come and serve. Remember, Nehemiah was asked, for how long will you be away? And he said the period that he will be away to go and serve and rebuild the walls and gates of Jerusalem. Possibly, when you take your next leave, you should ask, how can I come and serve the Lord? How can I come and be part of what God is doing? But also, in Nehemiah's commitment, the question is, how are you using the power that you have today to extend God's work? How are you using that power? Are you using it to benefit yourself? Or are you using it to be a blessing to others and even to the work of the Lord? Nehemiah's commitment was, yes, I am in a place of power. But with the power that I have, I can use it for the betterment of my people. I can use it to be able to rebuild the walls and the gates that had been destroyed. And that is why when he went before the king, he was able to use that opportunity and raise his concerns to the king. And so today, even as we come to the end of this, in chapter 1 up to chapter 2 verse 10, we find a man who had a concern. We find a man who was in a crisis. But we find a man who was committed to the work that was ahead of him. We find a man that who knew the secret to all these things was prayer. Was prayer. And that is why we find that even in Nehemiah chapter 2 verse 4, we are told that even when the king asked him, how can I help you? We are told that with a prayer to the God of heaven, Nehemiah was able to find favor with the king. So today, as I conclude, I'm asking you, will you make your life count? Will you arise and build? It is one thing to be concerned about a matter, and it is another thing to act over it, over that concern. What crisis are you facing today that is hindering you from arising and building? Is it sin? Is it resources? Is it past experiences? What opposition are you facing? Who are your Sanballats? Who are your Tobias? Who is challenging you? I'd like you to tell you today, I'd like to tell you today that prayer is the key. A commitment to prayer and relationship with God will make a difference in your life. And so, you may be like Nehemiah today. There are many concerns around you. You may look at things and find that as if you are in a crisis. You may be in a place where you're facing challenge as Nehemiah faced. But I believe you can seek to make a commitment to say, I will arise and build. And I believe with prayer, as James says, that the prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Availeth much. And I pray that when the books of history are written, may it be said of you, that you were just like Nehemiah who sought and who seeked and who stepped out to arise and build. And that is the call that we are making even to us today, even as we start off this series, that we may arise and build. Let us pray together. Father, we thank you this wonderful and glorious day. We thank you for your faithfulness. We thank you for your word this wonderful morning and even afternoon. 
We pray that God, even as we've taken time to hear from you, I pray that Jehovah God, may there be Nehemiahs in our midst, Lord, to arise. Lord, to be concerned even over matters, but even beyond the concern, to arise and even take our position, O oh God. Father, even some, you may be calling them to arise, but when they look around themselves, they only see crisis. But God, even as we see in your word, that Lord, you're a God who changes our crisis for the betterment of the things that, Lord, you've called us into. How I pray that, Jehovah God, even in the positions you've put us in, places of power, Father, may we still seek to commit to the work of God. Not to come and serve you when we are old. Not to come and give when we do not have anything to do. But to step out in faith and go forth and even commit ourselves to the work of God. Lord, you're calling on us to arise to rebuild our families. To arise and rebuild our homes, our community, your church, our nation at large, Abba Father. Lord, may we be bold to step out today. May we be a people of prayer who commit all things unto you, O God. And even where we may be struggling in our prayers, O Lord, Father, may you teach us how to pray. Lord, we bless you and we honor you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Peter. Thank you for that word, even from Nehemiah and also from the book of Ezra. Uh, and as we were listening uh, and I was looking at uh, the book of Ezra, I noted that the people of Israel, even as they dedicated the temple, uh, back there in the book of Ezra, when they were also, uh, after they had built the temple and were dedicating it, that they gave a lot towards it and that they celebrated with joy. And so that reminds me, even as we come to a time to give today, uh, that even as we are in this season and our theme is Arise and Build, that we may come back to that giving cheerfully and joyfully, uh, even as we encourage in Second Corinthians chapter 9, uh, from verse 6. Uh, remember this, Second Corinthians chapter 9 from verse 6. Remember this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to bless you abundantly so that in all things and at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work, even in this work that we will arise and build even together. And so let's pray, even as uh, you prepare your tithes and offering, I want us to pray and to believe God that it shall be from grateful hearts and joyful hearts. Father, we thank you for the giving of your people today. We are grateful for the word that we have received. And Father, I pray that this word will cause us to arise and to remember this place of coming together, not just concerned about our own business, but the business uh, you have called us to, even in your house, O oh God. And I pray that we will arise and that we will joyfully give and honor your name. We praise you. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. God is fighting for us, moving back the darkness, lifting up the kingdom that cannot be shaken. In the name of Jesus, enemies defeated, and we will shout it out, shout it out. God, God is fighting for us, pushing back the darkness, lighting up the kingdom that cannot be shaken. In the name of Jesus. Enemies defeated, and we will shout it out, shout it out. Sing, God. God is fighting for us, pushing back the darkness, lighting up the kingdom that cannot be shaken. In the name of Jesus, enemies defeated, and we will shout it out, shout it out. Kingdom, the kingdom, the 
believe I will believe I will not die the resurrection and I will not die. The Lord is good and he ha hears our confession. And so we thank God for his goodness today and even for the word that we have heard. I know it has blessed you uh, and I know that you're not the same even as you started uh, with us this morning. Uh, and so even as we come to the end, I first want to remind us of uh, an update on the roof project. Uh, so we are almost there. We are almost starting the work. Uh, just waiting a bit for some licensing and so we uh, we know that it will be coming out soon and so keep this in prayer and so when we start the work we will update you uh, so when we start we will not be meeting here on site on Sundays uh, as we usually meet here on site uh, but we will be meeting uh, through this online service and we will continue to uh, celebrate together and fellowship and praise and, and just continue in the word of God together in the online service. But for the on-site, we will wait until we are done with the roof project. So we will keep you updated. Uh, and so um, just today, um, um, I'm reminded that Pastor Peter has encouraged us, even from the word, uh, on the need for us as we arise and build to be a people of prayer. And so could you commit this in prayer, even as we come to a time of uh, redoing the roof, that we will also be a people of prayer and commit that to prayer. Uh, we usually have times of corporate prayer as a church on Zoom uh, on Fridays, Fridays uh, five, uh, at 6 p.m., 6 to 7 p.m. every Friday. You can join us on Zoom. And also on Sundays, we have Vigil, uh, 8.30 to 9 a.m. And so you can join us in those times of corporate prayer. As we arise and build, let's be a people of prayer because our God hears prayer. And so even as we come to the end, uh, uh, our benediction will be a prayer. Uh, from Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 1 uh, and I will pray even this prayer that I keep asking and I will ask the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, that he may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know him better. I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you the, the riches of his glorious inheritance in his holy people and is incomparably great power for us who believe. And that power is the same as the mighty strength he exerted when he raised Christ from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly realms, far above all rule and authority, power and dominion, and every name that is named not only in the present age, but also in the one to come. And God placed all things under his feet and appointed him to be head over everything for the church which is his body, the fullness of him who fills everything in every way. So therefore may the Lord bless you, may the Lord keep you, may the Lord watch over you and your families. Even as we arise and rebuild and continue to build, may the Lord bless your families and be with you. Hallelujah. God is fighting for us, pushing back the darkness, lighting up the kingdom that cannot be shaken. In the name of Jesus, enemies defeated, and we will shout it out, shout it out. God is fighting for us, pushing back the darkness, lighting up the kingdom.